So that then concludes the third part of debugging CurveFet. Okay, so this is the fourth part of the debugging curve FET. Um, so in the first part we made sure that the data was correct, and in the second part we made sure our fitting function was correct, and in the third part we made sure that we started with a good initial value in order to get the FET to go. Now, if you're still having problems, the place to turn to next is to ask the question, is, is there uncertainties in your data? So real experimental data always has errors associated with it, always has uncertainties. And sometimes you need to take those into account in the curve fit in order to get it to give a good value. So in this case, we're now going to turn to the third column um, of the data file we had when we loaded it up at the start. And in this third column, I've got the similar data, but I've increased the amount of noise and the amount of scatter. And I've increased the scatter particularly at the um, larger values of x when the y values are quite small. So let's go and have a quick look at this data then. So here we go. Um, so you see we've got the same sort of central peak, but now there's an awful lot of scatter um, in the, the re flat regions outside. So we've washed out those side lobes of the, of the sink function. Nevertheless, we can go ahead and we can go and try and fit it. Um, so let's go and do that. So we're going to do exactly what we were doing at the end of part three. We're going to use our guessing function to guess some values for the uh, fitting parameters based on the X and Y data. And we'll go and calculate the errors and then we'll plot our best fit um, on top of the data and see how it looks. Again, this is a really important part of debugging curve fit. Plot your best fit data back over the top of your data. In fact, if you want to go and do the job thoroughly, what you should do is you should plot your data, then go on top of that plot the results you get from the guess, best guess parameters when you run them through your fitting function, and then plot on top of that, uh, after you've done the curve fit, what happens when it, with the best fit parameters is actually found, and check to make sure that the curve fit really has made your um, fitting function fit the data better. So here we go. Okay, well that doesn't look so bad. If we look at the um, fitting parameters it's returned to us, it's still returned as about 1990, 1980. Um, but the uncertainty's gone up. Um, it's now plus or minus 40. Um, and likewise on the other parameters we've got more uncertainty. That's not very surprising. The scatter is more. It will be harder for it to go and figure out um, how to fit the data optimally well. You see, it's not actually done a bad job at all there. Um, the red line looks like it's going through quite a lot of the data. Okay, so um, maybe that's not so bad, but can we do any better? So the first thing I'm going to do is going to actually look at the data with the error bars. Now, um, from the experiment, you can often get some idea of what the error bar you're expecting actually is. So in this case, I, I know because I generated the data, um, an expression that will give me the size of the error bar. But if you were dealing with real data from a real experiment, then you'd be looking and think about how, how much uncertainty do you expect in various parts of your experiment, and using that to generate um, an error. And I'm going to create, therefore, this array called sigma, which is going to have the uncertainty data in it. And then I'm going to plot um, my data, only this time I'm going to plot it with error bars. And just to go and make it a little bit clearer, I'm in fact only going to plot every tenth data point in my in my data set. Otherwise, it just gets up to be a bit of a horrible mess. So there we go. That's our, our um, data. Well, 10% of our data, rather, with the error bars. And we can just show you that it really does have the error bars there. If I just zoom in, you can see, yes, there are error bars. And the size of the error bars changes. Um, and as we go up into the peak, the error bars get smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, so the error bars are worst um, for when you've got outside the central peak, and as you go to bigger and bigger or more and more extreme x, the error bars get quite chunky. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to um, uh, have a look at what happens when we go and uh, try and fit that. 
So first of all, on top of this plot, I'm just going to go and plot the FET from last time that's going to show us um, the FET without the error bars. So there you go. And you can see, um, so that's the same FET we just showed, uh, just showing how it goes through the, the data points. So now we're going to go and include the errors. So in my curve fit line, I've introduced a sigma equals and then my um, array of sigma values. And because I know that these are actually real error bars in real experimental units, I can say absolute sigma equals true. And then we're going to do the same standard thing. We're going to calculate the error. I'm going to plot the function over the top and then um, see what the um, uncertainties and the errors look like. So there we go. And if we just look at our FET, you go, well, OK, that's fine. It's not really changed very much. So have we actually improved anything? Well, if we go down and we look at the um, optimal parameters and the uncertainty, then what we notice is that the uncertainties have come right the way down. So our optimal parameters maybe haven't changed that much, but the accuracy with which we're determining them has got much better. So now, rather than saying it was 1990 plus or minus 40, I'm able to say it's 1986 plus or minus 5. So I've made an eightfold improvement in my error on the A parameter by including the uncertainties. And the reason that's worked is because the um, peak itself had the smallest uncertainty in it. And so by telling it I'm including the, the uncertainties in the data, what I'm telling curve fit is, pay more attention to the data points in the peak and worry less about this big mass of data points on either side where the uncertainty is very large. Um, so that way we've actually managed to improve our, our FET. So that then concludes the fourth part of um, debugging curve FET, um, or in this case really what we're doing is we're optimising the curve fitting um, and that's by including the uncertainties. Um, and in, actually, in extreme cases, what you can find is that um, if you don't tell it to go and um, uh, include the uncertainties, it can even get itself to the point where it can't fit the data because it's trying to fit data where there's just too much uncertainty um, in there at all. Um, so sometimes actually including the, the sigma is a necessary um, in order to get curve fit to work properly. So if after you've gone and made sure your data is right and you've made sure your fitting function is right, and you've given it the best possible starting value you can, if it's still not fitting well, then possibly it's that you need to include the uncertainties into your fit as well in order to get a good, get it to fit well. Um, and then you have to decide whether um, the uncertainties you're including are a real error bar, or whether you're simply just telling it by the size of the error bar, pay more attention to the bits where the error bar is small and pay less attention to where the error bar is big. And that controls whether you set absolute sigma to be true or to be false.